Hello everyone, I am happy to invite you to this um, uh, series of lectures on the second level uh, thermodynamics course namely applied thermodynamics. In the first level course, we uh, discussed primarily uh, the concepts relating to uh, thermodynamics, um, you know, concepts like um, uh, system, control volume, state of a system, uh, properties, uh, pure substances, how to evaluate changes in properties of uh, pure substances, and then first law of thermodynamics for a system, first law of thermodynamics for a control volume. And then we developed um, uh, concepts uh, relating to second law of thermodynamics, namely Clausius inequality, uh, the Kelvin Planck statement of the second law, Clausius statement of the second law. And then uh, we introduced um, uh, the uh, property called entropy, and uh, we looked at uh, methods by which we could calculate uh, entropy change of uh, a system uh, undergoing a process. Then we looked at some other uh, fundamental concepts like um, uh, isentropic efficiency uh, and importantly principle of increase of entropy. And we um, uh, concluded those lectures by looking at um, uh, systems executing uh, cyclic processes, in particular uh, system executing a Rankine cycle, uh, Brayton cycle and uh, which are both uh, power producing cycles and then we also looked at a system executing a vapor compression refrigeration cycle which was a power absorbing cycle. So, the primary learning um, objective uh, of that course was to understand, learn and understand all the all these fundamental concepts relating to uh, engineering thermodynamics and apply them to uh, uh, certain examples, illustrative examples which bring out uh, subtle aspects of these ideas of these concepts and ideas and so on. That was the learning objective of that course. What uh, we will pursue in this course is the uh, is the following. Um, the uh, learning objectives in this course uh, are to apply the concepts that we uh, discussed in the first level course to practical devices mostly uh, in mechanical engineering although uh, some of these um, applications that we look at can be said to span different branches of uh, engineering but primarily in mechanical engineering ok. So, basically we will uh, look at practical devices or applications and uh, apply uh, first law and second law to these applications and um, uh, calculate quantities that are of interest, maybe um, uh, exit properties from the device or um, efficiency of the device and so on and so forth. For instance, in the previous course, we, um, uh, we had um, a defined efficiency which was basically uh, defined from the energy perspective. What we will do now in this course is to define uh, an efficiency which is uh, even more general than this and is uh, based on a second law perspective ok. So, these are um, important things that we will develop uh, in this course ok. So, the applications that we will look at in this course are uh, wide ranging for instance you know we will look at um, uh, steam turbine, uh, gas turbine power plant, vapor compression refrigeration device. We have already seen these three in their simplest form in the previous course at the end of the previous course, but what we will uh, see here are um, um, applications uh, which are much more detailed than the simple cycles that we saw in the previous course ok. So, the steam turbine itself will we will just look at not only the steam turbine, but also variations of the uh, Rankine cycle. Okay. And then again in the case of the gas turbine, we will look at um, uh, not only the, uh, uh, the basic uh, gas turbine cycle. Uh, we will also look at advanced versions of the uh, gas turbine cycle. For example, it will not be just the Brayton cycle, uh, we would do Brayton cycle with uh, intercooling, Brayton cycle with reheat, Brayton, Brayton cycle with regeneration and so on. And similarly for steam uh, power plant. So, it is not going to be just basic Rankine cycle, but Rankine cycle with the superheat, Rankine cycle with regeneration, reheat and so on and so forth. We will also look at uh, vapor compression refrigeration devices. Again, the cycle that we saw in the previous course was the basic cycle. So, here we will allow for additional uh, complexities in the cycle. So, we will look at more uh, a more realistic cycle and then analyze the performance of the cycle uh, using thing metrics that we are that we have already developed and metrics that we will additional metrics that we will develop now. For example, one important metric that we will develop uh, is the so called exergy. Okay, which we did not discuss in the previous course at all. So, we will develop the notion of exergy 
uh, from second law in this course and then uh, define an efficiency which is the so called second law efficiency. Okay. So, in addition to efficiency calculated on an energy basis, we will also calculate uh, efficiency uh, from a second law perspective which is uh, which is much more uh, useful. No doubt, you know the efficiency based on energy is quite useful, but the efficiency based on second law allows us to make very good engineering decisions, comparative engineering decisions for different applications which are executing the same thing. Uh, we will then move on to look at applications like uh, spark ignition, compression ignition, IC engines. Okay. These are actually uh, uh, very complicated in, uh, in real life. So, what we will do is we will sort of consider an idealized version of, this, uh, of these devices, the so called air standard cycles and then we will uh, do an analysis uh, using methods that we have developed so far and then we move on to psychrometry. Uh, psychrometry is a, a very important uh, application in mechanical engineering. So, basically uh, if you look at many uh, uh, heating, ventilation and air conditioning application today HVAC, uh, it is used in automobiles to maintain the uh, cabin at a comfortable temperature, it is used in large buildings to maintain the building uh, at comfortable temperature. Some part of the uh, buildings may require heating, some people may require heating, some may require a slightly colder temperature, slightly warmer temperature and so on. So, different parts of the building have to be maintained at uh, different conditions, temperature as well as humidity and HVAC is the, uh, uh, is the part of mechanical engineering that deals with that. HVAC itself is founded on uh, psychrometry which deals with moist air. So, basically uh, what we need to understand is that the level of comfort that a person feels is related or dependent not only on just the temperature of the atmosphere, but also the level of humidity in the atmosphere. Okay. So, we need to develop thermodynamic models which can handle uh, moist air or humid air and then look at applications and see how uh, the temperature and the moisture are interrelated and how they play a role in determining the final uh, conditions in, in an application. Okay. That is what we will look at in, uh, in psychrometry. Okay. Then we move on to combustion of fuels. Okay. In uh, combustion of fuels, basically we look at many different types of fuels and the thermodynamics and thermochemistry associated with the combustion of fuel. So, we look at their composition and uh, their combustion, we write down the chemical equation, then we do things like that. Again, this is an application of concepts that we have already uh, studied. So, it could be a, uh, for example, uh, an IC engine. Uh, where fuel undergoes combustion. If that is the case, then we will treat the, uh, the device uh, as a thermodynamic system and then analyze it uh, appropriately. Now, in case it is a gas turbine combustor, then we will treat it as a steady flow combustor and again apply our uh, steady flow energy equation and other concepts and then carry out an analysis. So, basically, this will be uh, an analysis, this course will deal with analysis of different applications, wide range of applications, mostly using concepts that we have developed earlier and in addition concepts that will be developed in the early part of this course. <coughs> the last part of this course, we look at compressible flow through nozzles. Now, flow through nozzles is a very, very important application for mechanical engineers. Okay. It may be uh, obvious that it is a very important application for aerospace engineers, but actually it is a very important application for mechanical engineers. And for mechanical engineers, the uh, application is even uh, broader than what aerospace engineers see because aerospace engineers typically work only with air as the working substance, whereas mechanical engineers have to deal with uh, flow through nozzles not only involving air, but also involving steam and also refrigerant. Okay. All these three types of nozzles are used in many practical applications involving mechanical engineers. For example, in turbo machines, steam turbines and so on, uh, the nozzles uh, work with steam as the working substance and in other refrigeration applications, again nozzles work with the refrigerant as the working substance. So, what we will look at is uh, compressible flow uh, through nozzles involving not only air, but also steam. Okay. We really do not look at any uh, particular uh, example involving refrigerants, but the extension um, to doing calculations with refrigerants is not very uh, difficult to do from steam going to refrigerants is not very difficult to do.
Now, what are the students expected to be able to do at the end of this course? Okay, so basically, uh, given any uh, device that you have not encountered, for example, when we uh, when we look at all these applications, we are looking at a wide range of applications. So you will become familiar with many conventional devices in mechanical engineering, but you may encounter a new device. Okay, so what this uh, course should equip you is to take any new device, carry out a thermodynamic analysis of the device, evaluate first law and second law efficiencies of such a device and any other thermodynamic property of interest. For example, uh, what is the exit pressure, uh, exit temperature or work power required, work required and so on. Now, in case uh, we are looking at um, a compressible flow through nozzles, then students should be able to calculate thermodynamic properties of interest at the exit of the nozzle. <clears throat> with air or steam as the working substance. Primarily with air or steam as the working substance, extension to refrigerant is not really uh, uh, very difficult, it is relatively straightforward. Okay? But in this course, we will look primarily at air or steam as the working substance in the nozzle. So, these are the learning outcomes of the course. Uh, let us go through the uh, outline of the course. Uh, the outline given here is uh, relatively detailed, but I will just uh, uh, discuss the highlights, then we will go through the details as we uh, go through the lecture. Okay? So, we start uh, by uh, uh, developing expressions for calculating entropy change of a control volume. In the first level course, we looked at calculating entropy change of a system that is undergoing a process. Here we start by developing uh, expressions for calculating entropy change of a, cal of a control volume. So, basically we will derive what is called <coughs> an entropy balance equation. Okay? So, this entropy balance equation will allow us if applied to the control volume or when applied to the control volume, it will allow us to evaluate um, for example, the rate of entropy generation due to internal irreversibilities within the control volume. That is um, one of the most important quantities that we are interested in. Rate of entropy generation, remember as we discussed in the previous course, entropy generation can be due to internal irreversibilities or external irreversibilities or both. Okay? So, we will uh, derive an entropy balance equation similar to the steady flow energy equation. Okay? And the most important quantity that will come out of this uh, equation would be uh, the ability to uh, calculate the uh, rate of entropy generation due to internal irreversibility in a control volume. Okay. We will follow it up by applying um, the entropy balance equation to the control volume. Then we will also take into account the um, entropy change of the surroundings or uh, rate of change of entropy of the surroundings. And by putting the two together, we should be able to uh, calculate rate of entropy generation in the universe, okay, which is perhaps an even more important metric. Uh, as we uh, saw in the previous course. Entropy generation in the universe is um, uh, it's a very important performance metric. Devices should operate in such a manner as to minimize entropy generation in the universe. So, rate of entropy generation in the universe is a very important quantity and in fact, we will use that to define the second law efficiency in this particular course. Okay? <clears throat> then we also develop uh, expressions for work interaction of internally reversible steady flow processes. You may recall from the previous course that uh, we had explicitly stated that the two processes are of fundamental importance in thermodynamics. One is the reversible isothermal process, the other one is a reversible adiabatic process. You may recall that uh, the Carnot cycle is composed entirely of reversible isothermal and reversible adiabatic processes. And we also showed that any reversible cycle may be written as or any reversible process may be actually written uh, or replaced by a sequence of uh, reversible isothermal and reversible adiabatic processes. And we extended that to demonstrate that any reversible cycle itself may be replaced by a set of infinite number of Carnot cycles, infinitesimally small Carnot cycles. Okay? So, we had done that. So, what we do here, uh, of course, all that was done for a, a thermodynamic system. Here we will uh, uh, develop uh, expressions for work interaction of 
So, we will develop expressions for work interaction for, uh, for an internally reversible uh, process. For an internally reversible uh, uh, isothermal and internally reversible adiabatic process. The next module uh, that we will uh, uh, take up is exergy. <coughs> now, exergy is of uh, fundamental importance in thermodynamics because um, it actually uh, allows us to calculate lost work. Exergy basically is availability. So, we have a thermodynamic system. Any thermodynamic system which is not at the uh, same condition as the ambient condition. So, if a, if a system or a thermodynamic system is at the ambient condition, then there is no scope for developing any work from the system. Anything that is not at the uh, ambient system, for example, uh, a vessel containing um, air at a higher pressure or a block of metal which is at a higher temperature than the ambient temperature or a block which is at a higher elevation than the datum. So, all these systems are at a state, thermodynamic state which is different from the ambient state. So, the ambient state is the so called dead state. So, if a system is in the ambient state, there is no scope for developing work. Okay. Uh, so, any system that is at a state which is different from the ambient state, when I say different, it is not just um, air at a higher pressure than ambient pressure. We may have a vessel where we have air at a lower pressure than ambient pressure. Even that can be used for developing work. We may have a, a block of metal which is at a temperature less than the ambient temperature. There is scope for developing work there also. So, any system that is at a uh, state different from the ambient state may be, uh, um, I'm sorry, has the potential to develop work. Okay, and that is what exergy quantifies. So, when uh, the system actually executes a process, whether it is a uh, whether it is a, a system executing a process or steady flow process, doesn't matter. We can actually uh, see or compare how much of the work that is developed during this process is. Um, well, let me put it differently. So, uh, we can actually see how the work that is developed during this process compares with the amount of work that we could have developed uh, using this system uh, based on exergy. So, basically we have a system, we start out with the system and the system then uh, undergoes a process. Let us say we get a certain amount of work. Now, based on the definition of exergy, we also know how much uh, work could have been developed by the system. So, basically we can compare the work that is actually developed with the work that could have been developed and this gives us an idea of how good the process is and this is tied to the amount of entropy that the process generates <coughs> in the universe. Okay? And based on the notion of exergy, we will develop the uh, so called second law efficiency. Okay. So, this takes into account as I said irreversibility is both internal and external and is a very very important performance metric in many practical applications in uh, mechanical engineering. The next module involves thermodynamic cycles and as I mentioned earlier, we basically will uh, look at um, uh, Rankine cycle here, but not just the basic Rankine cycle, but additional uh, variations of the Rankine cycle. Then we look at the so called air standard cycle, okay, where air is the working substance and again remember we gave the definition of heat engine in the, uh, in the previous lecture. So, we actually treat each one of this as a heat engine and with air as the working substance and carry out an analysis. So, we start with the air standard Brayton cycle and uh, then we move on to air standard auto cycle, diesel cycle and dual cycle. Okay. Then the last cycle that we look at uh, in this module would be the vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Again, we look at the basic cycle and then uh, modifications to the cycle that are usually seen in practical applications. So, we look at real cycles also. So, the next module deals with psychrometry and as I said this uh, has to do with calculations involving moist air. So, we start with uh, uh, definition of moist air, thermodynamic state and so on and then application of first law to psychrometric processes. Okay. Basically, this is application of first law but to moist air. Okay. A new concept that is introduced here is the so called wet bulb temperature. 
then we discuss psychrometric chart and many other applications. All these applications um, will relate to the so called HVAC type of application, heating, venting, I am sorry, heating, ventilation and air conditioning. Okay. How to maintain uh, temperature and humidity level uh, in a, a particular environment is what we will be looking at. There are some other applications in psychrometry that we will also look at. For example, drying and cooling tower or sort of different from all the other HVAC applications. Psychrometry is mostly HVAC, but there are also other applications like this which are not HVAC, but which are also quite uh, extensively encountered in mechanical engineering. The next module deals with uh, combustion thermodynamics and uh, we first start with uh, combustion stoichiometry where we write down uh, a chemical equation uh, describing the combustion of a fuel, hydrocarbon fuel or a non-hydrocarbon fuel and then we develop uh, notions of excess air, equivalence ratio and so on. Then uh, we apply first law mostly steady flow energy equation to a combustion system. So, we have a certain amount of fuel coming into a steady flow reactor, we have a certain amount of air coming in, we have combustion products which are exiting the reactor and we will apply energy balance to calculate perhaps the uh, maximum temperature in the reactor or maximum temperature of the product stream or the heat that is released from uh, the reactor and so on and so forth. So, this will basically be um, uh, steady flow energy analysis of the reactor where combustion is taking place. <coughs> One um, uh, new concept that we will develop in, in this module is the so called uh, uh, that we will develop is the so called enthalpy of formation and sensible enthalpy. So, in the first level thermodynamics course, we have used the term enthalpy and we have done calculations using the enthalpy. We basically said you know for ideal gases it is just H is equal to Cp times T and for steam and uh, refrigerant we looked up enthalpy values from the uh, tables. Okay. So, here we will actually make a very important distinction which is enthalpy of formation and sensible enthalpy. It turns out that most of the calculations that we have done so far uh, actually uh, utilize the sensible enthalpy, but now because we have chemical reactions we need to take enthalpy of formation also into account. So, as I said we will uh, do uh, first law calculations and calculate enthalpy of combustion, calorific value of a fuel, then uh, adiabatic flame temperature. Then we will also do a second law analysis of uh, combustion systems. Basically, the idea is to calculate rate at which entropy is generated as a result of this combustion process. Okay. So, that is a very important quantity. So, we will do both the uh, first law and second law analysis of combustion systems. The last module uh, involves compressible uh, flow through nozzles. We start by discussing compressibility of fluids. What is compressibility of fluid? Then we make a distinction between compressible flow and incompressible flow. So, basically you can have a compressible fluid and an incompressible fluid, compressible flow and incompressible flow. So, we make these distinctions very, very carefully. Then we do, uh, we look at uh, one dimensional uh, flows, we develop basic ideas in one dimensional flows. For example, things like static temperature, stagnation temperature and so on, which were not required so far. But now, when you deal with compressible flow, we need to distinguish these types of uh, concepts. Then we look at normal shock waves, uh, calculations involving normal shock waves. Then we go to quasi one dimensional flow, basically flow through nozzles. <coughs> We will look at both flow through a convergent nozzle as well as convergent divergent nozzle and then we will develop a theory uh, for flow of steam through nozzles. Okay. So, concept so far developed so far will be very general. Then we see how we modify this to look at uh, flow of steam through uh, nozzles. Okay. We will not be look at, I mean sorry, we will not be looking at uh, normal shock waves involving steam that is a much more advanced material involves lot of non equilibrium effects. So, we will not be looking at normal shock waves in steam, we will only be looking at flow of steam through nozzles, okay. mostly isentropic uh, flow of steam through nozzles, equilibrium flows or isentropic flow through nozzles. Um, like uh, what I did for the first level course, I will be teaching out of my uh, book uh, titled Fundamentals of Engineering Thermodynamics, second edition. 
the worked examples illustrations have all been taken from this book. Of course, uh, the worked examples that I will be uh, presenting here is a limited subset of what is available in the book. There are far more uh, exa worked examples uh, in the book. So, I urge you to consult this book or whichever textbook you are comfortable with. Okay? And again, this is the, uh, the first level thermodynamics course that is now available in NPTEL and also YouTube. In fact, most of the examples that we will do in this course will be carried over from the first level course. And that is done deliberately with the objective of uh, demonstrating how uh, for a particular example, we can do first law analysis and evaluate certain type of quantities and how for the same example, we build on whatever we have done so far and do a second law analysis and uh, calculate uh, even more quantities which are of importance in mechanical engineering. Okay? So, it is done with the specific objective of demonstrating what a first law analysis can yield for a particular application and what a second law analysis can yield for a particular application. So, many of the examples, uh, worked examples that we will uh, discuss here have been carried over from the previous set of lectures. So, I urge you to uh, just go through these lectures at your leisure and make sure that you are able to sort of uh, go back and locate uh, titles, concepts and examples from the previous lecture. So, what we will do in the next lecture is uh, start our discussion of uh, entropy change of a control volume. We will develop an, as I said an entropy balance equation which will allow us to calculate uh, rate of generation of entropy due to internal irreversibilities as well as external uh, as well as uh, rate of entropy generation in the universe.